in the desert you can't remember your name cause there ain't no one for to give you no pain day nine time approximately 2 a.m. location Sun City downtown big 52 SC branch Ah, this headache I can't sleep Henrietta rubbed her sorry head Puppy was a good aim and had a fair bit of strength when it came to throwing things, and now the young griffin was paying the toll of Puppy's skill. The day had been a hard one with lots of work, dismantling the buildings over the outer belt and bringing the materials to the residential area. If the young griffin hadn't had that wound, she would have been asleep like everyone else. Next time I see that yellow devil, I'm gonna spank her so bad that her rump could be used as a landing signal during foggy nights. By the way, what was the fool doing in Sun City? The whole place was a trap, with that hypnotic buzz that could bend your mind, and... Henry's eyes widened in sudden realization as she muttered to herself, Wait an egg-fucking-second. The buzz is gone. The damn buzz is gone. And I can think clearly. I've got to get out of here. The half-eagle stood up, spread her wings, ready to take flight but froze in place as soon as she noticed the other griffins. There were five of them in the room. Two were the talons that she tried to lose by diving into this fucking place, while well, the other three had the talon tattoos but wore no armor and didn't appear to be armed. At last. It's payback time. A cruel grin appeared on Henry's beak while she unsheathed her bowie knife and stepped towards the two sleeping griffins. She was the one of the unarmored ones, deeply sleeping because of the day's hard work. The young half-eagle moved slowly and silently, like a serpent in the grass, approaching her victim from behind, ready to grasp her beak and slit her throat. Very slowly, she leaned over her victim's head, and... Then the vengeance craving Grifton noticed the eggs. Ah, fuck. Please, no. The fire in Henrietta's eyes died as she looked at the two eggs that the griffin was hugging in her sleep. Rage became hesitation, and the griffin's resolve shattered. Killing a mother in her sleep was beyond any hunger for revenge she had. But the other four, on the other claw... The other four what? Two were just victims of the place. One of them, she could have been the father of those eggs. Which they were totally unarmed and possibly didn't have anything against her and the two that were chasing her inside Sun City were sleeping hard enough that she was going to be miles away before they realized that she was gone. What was the point in killing them like this? Not fair. I'm no backstabber. Henry turned on her tail and headed for the door. She stopped as she noticed a spot of pink in the corner of the room. Willie Flail, Stinky Mail, or a name, something like that. Puppy's Doll. Hell, she'd almost forgotten about the doll. Ah, fuck! Puppy! Stupid featherhead. She'd almost forgotten about the foal. Day 9. Time, approximately 2.30 a.m. Location, Sun City Downtown, Big 52 SC Branch. Sitting in the red shadows of the control room, Puppy was still confused. She had no idea who could be that mare's voice that visited her before Mr. Voice came back but she wasn't sure if this newcomer was a pretty pony. Even thinking about that scary mare talking in her head was enough to send shivers down her back, and to make her hope that she wasn't going to return anytime soon. Luckily enough, Puppy was now in good company again, and this meant that whatever problems the mare's voice would create, they would be far enough away to let Puppy think about more pressing matters. First things first. Finding her a name. Since Miss Voice had already been taken... Ah, uh, she's a she, so Miss is okay. Man, she's a, a scary, scary voice. Sounds wrong. Puppy frowned. This is going to be a hard nut to crack. Head voice? Eh. Nightmare voice. Too long. I know. Creepy voice, because she's so creepy. Yeah! The hot on the helmet tinged informing Puppy that the mission, Shaping Nightmares, was successfully accomplished. Yes, Puppy Smiles was just this good and nothing could stop her, 
Not even finding names for things. Okay, maybe something long to read could be a mighty foe. And if she had to count things that were more than her hooves. And even opening pickle jars, that had been an impossible feat. But everything else was just an easy game, right? Go, puppy! Now that the cheering was done, it was time to undertake part two of her master plan. Find Henry, and getting out of here as quick as a pony at the running of the leaves. Okie dokie, Mr. Voice. Where's Henry? Henrietta Fairbright is set to primary target. The arrow on the compass integrated in Puppy's helmet disappeared and reappeared, pointing to the filly's left, displaying a distance in meters that rapidly diminished until it reached a single digit. Yay! It's adventure tie! Bam! Crash! Blam! One of the windows exploded, and with a flutter of wings, a young griffin wielding a pair of forty-five pistols blitzed into the room through a cloud of glass and zipping bullets. Hold on, puppy, I'm here! The griffin tumbled across the floor, trying to identify any possible hostile threat, fired twice at the lights in the ceiling, which plunged the room into darkness and jumped behind a desk before upturning it to use as an improvised barrier, all in the space of just a few seconds. A smile grew on Puppy's muzzle as she watched the show. Wow, this was so cool. Henry was totally the best pony. She was like that griffin in that movie. Leon, the professional. The young filly stomped her hooves on the floor, cheering her friend's performance. Woohoo! Go, Henry, you rock! Way to go! A couple of bullets narrowly missed Puppy's helmet before the young gunslinger recognized her friend. Lie flat on the floor, Puppy. I'm taking care of him. Leave this little pony alone, you brain eaters. What? The filly tilted her head with a curious expression. Noticing that no pony was firing back and that there was no movement in the room, a sudden thought struck her. Could it be that the filly wasn't actually in danger? Henrietta smiled in embarrassment as she stepped I stopped acting like a special forces pony and took a decent look around, putting her guns away. The griffin stroked back her feathers on her forehead and assumed a cool demeanor. Hey, puppy, still in one piece? The filly checked her legs and tail, then smiled and nodded to her friend. Yep, I forgot nothing. Is Silky Tail all right? Your doll? Sure, want it back? Henrietta grabbed the pink plushie and waved it. Puppy shook her head. Nopey Mopey, she's fine with you. I asked her to keep an eye on you, and she warned me that you were in danger. So I came here, but at the beginning you were all grumpy and scolded me. Then you flied away and didn't want to talk to me anymore. So I waited for night because I had a super duper mega plan, but before I had to say to the mayor of this town, it was ugly. And the mayor wasn't a mayor, but a stupid voice that told me bad things. But I was smarter, and he said he was sorry, and now he's gone away. So I'm smarter than Blue Voice. Henrietta rose a claw. Wait, wait, wait. I see you moving your muzzle, but all I hear is blah, blah, blah. Oh, this makes no sense, and we're in a hurry. Everyone's sleeping right now, but very soon someone will wake up and realize that the buzzing's gone. This place is filled with Enclave Pegasi, Talon Griffins, and ponies from at least two different tribes, and they're all just sitting on a fortified source of pure water and fresh food. Puppy tilted her head in confusion. Ah, uh, okie dokie? The griffin facepalmed. All right, simple version. In a couple of hours, Tranquility Lane will become a war zone. Sun City. And we have to get our tails out of here before that happens. Capiche? War zone? Like when ponies are mean to each other? Asked Puppy with some degree of doubt. Yeah, exactly. Each group will want to take this place for themselves. Now, leave behind everything heavy you have in your bags, because we need to fly away very fast. Puppy frowned. Why do they have to argue? Ponies are pretty and nice. They shouldn't be mean. The little fool explained her theory about pony behavior, as if it was something so simple that it was impossible for it being some other way. Henrietta opened her beak to reply, but an entire world turned into a wasteland as legacy of pony kindness. But trying to explain such a concept to Puppy was harder than teaching an anvil how to swim, and, even more important, it needed time that they didn't have. 
Yeah, exactly. But we have to go away right now, because you have to find your mom, right? Hope you nodded vigorously. Yes, I have to go to a Pegasus flying place called Blue, I don't know. But Miss Happy told me it's called something Manor? I don't remember the name very well. But there's an arrow on my compass, so I can't miss it. Henrietta sighed. Let me guess. It's south. The griffin pointed a claw in the direction. Puppy stared in surprise at her friend. Wah! How'd you know that? Are you a wizard? Yeah, sure. I'm the best magician in Equestria. The great and powerful Henry. Now, please dump everything you don't need, or you'll lose the flight. The griffin paused a moment, noticing something new in her friend. Say, since when do you have a blue streak in your mane? A thin line of blue ran through Puppy's blonde mane, starting from her forehead, just above her right eye, and ending three quarters down her neck. The line was something uh, of a couple shades of blue. In a similar way to the mare from the Ministry of Magic, while I'd snarkle or something like that. Day 9. Time. Approximately 3 a.m. Location. Sun City Downtown, Big 52, SC Branch. Puppy wrist opening one eye and looked down. The world rushed away into the night. Large skyscrapers zipped past her below, and dark, deserted roads trailed off into the distance under her nose. Way too far under her nose to be comfortable with. Are we there yet? The filly grabbed Henrietta's neck tight, tight enough to choke her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Loosen your hooves, puppy. You're gonna make us both crash. At first, it seemed natural to the griffin to fly with puppy. The foal was really small, and when she threw away those useless scraps, she was lighter than a military backpack. Problem came when Puppy discovered that she hated flying. Just close your eyes and pretend that you're having a regular piggyback ride or sing something. Puppy already had her eyes sealed tighter than a stable door, but it didn't seem to help at all. Seeing all the houses from above and seeing the roofs run and run away in a crazy spinning of colors already scared her hard enough. It wasn't like looking down from the tower. Towers didn't go around, and they had floors. She liked floors. They were so, so, flat and floory. Please, 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 I'll behave. Put me down, please. Ah, come on. Are you a scaredy pony? Have some faith in your friends. With a stroke of her wings, Henrietta gained a little altitude, flying between two skyscrapers and soaring past downtown, high above the residential area of Sun City. The fresh night air tasted of dust and old, but the south winds carried a new scent. The sea. It was a good night to fly. Just relax and enjoy the trip. Sing something. Singing something. Yes, that always helped Puppy. She just had to sing a song and everything would be better. The filly cleared her throat and tried singing the first thing that came to her mind. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great- Oh, please, please, please put me down now! The filly was dancing the pony pokey on Henry's back, but a griffin's constitution is one of a predator. Happy to fly with an adult pony struggling in her claws and still capable of gaining altitude in the meantime. Stop it! I'm not gonna let you fall. Yow! Don't pluck me! Have you the slightest idea of how long those plumes take to grow back? Sick of being pestered by the panicking pony, the young flyer bumped puppy smiles off her back and caught her falling filly with her front talons. Yeah, all right. Now it's this way you don't risk falling. Hold on. We'll land as soon as we're out of the ruins. Eh? Don't wet your suit. It's a couple of kilometers at most. We gotta put some distance between us and this place before it blows up. The half-eagle accelerated, pushing herself harder so that the trip would be as short as possible. But carrying a howling banshee in the night sky was going to wake some sleeping ponies. Henrietta could only pray that her luck did not run out and no pony would poke their head out of a window, or look for the source, or that they wouldn't care enough. Day 9. Time, approximately 3.30 a.m. Location, Serpent Desert. 
Big 52 SC Branch. I wasn't scared at all, you know. I was just, uh, cautious. I mean, with all those identical roofs and the wind, you could, uh, lose yourself. And there's much better seeing the names of the streets when you don't know where you are going. Now that she had all of her hooves on solid ground again, Puppy was desperately trying to regain her macho appeal. But the effort was a little wasted on Henrietta, literally rolling on the floor laughing. Priceless. You're priceless, Puppy. The griffin gasped as she tried to inhale, wiping a tear from her eye and burst into another laugh. How did you scream? Eep! Do it again. Do it again, please. The filian yellow pouted, sat down and sighed. Hey, it wasn't me, the one that got lost in the city. I've seen chickens smarter than you. Bam. Puppy looked down at the hole in her suit, right where her heart should be. Hey, there are already enough bully bots doing that. Henrietta got up and waved her gun in a dismissive manner. She still hadn't stopped smiling, even when she shot Puppy. Ah, don't complain. You got tore apart by a manacore and you're still standing there. How could you get hurt by a bullet or two? Blam blam. Another couple of shots pierced Puppy, one on a leg and again in her chest. Stop it! The stupid suit starts talking absurdities and mumbo-jumbos every time it happens. A thin thread of pink poured out from the holes made by the griffin's gun. Okay, okay. But you stop calling me a chicken. Henrietta yawned and put away her pistols. Just for your information, normal ponies die when they are shot. Even ghouls. So don't try this yourself on other ponies, okay? Bobby tilted her head, a bit confused. But I am a normal pony. I'm a pony. Hey, hey, I didn't say otherwise. Oh, are we a little upset today? Want me to sing you a lullaby? Henry asked with a mocking tone. The fool nodded vigorously. Sure, I love, love, love lullabies. Can we sing Hush Now, Quiet Now? The griffin facepalmed. What was the point in trying to provoke this fool if she couldn't even tell what she was being mocked? You're a lost cause, puppy. Hush now, quiet now, it's time to rest your sleepy head. Hush now, quiet now, it's time to go to bed. Henry sighed and started walking south. Why, Dad? Why do I loan my life to this idiot twice? The girl smiled and turned her head towards the little pony. Hey, jump on your red racer. I'll fly above you. We have a lot of ground to cover if you want to get to Rust Manor by tomorrow. Day 9. Time, approximately 10.30 p.m. Location, Serpent Desert, Big 52 SC Branch. A small campfire cast the shadows of Puppy and Henrietta over the sand dunes. The two travelers were sitting next to the little source of heat and light. Henry was eating something from a tin can. But from the faces she made, it wasn't exactly griffin food. The clouds above the desert helped the place maintain its temperature, even during the night. But the half-eagle was still wearing the uh, plaid on her shoulders. So, puppy, this blue voice told you that you're a robot? Henry's expression was hard to read, like if she was trying to keep a poker face until the filly finished telling her the whole story. Yeah. And he seemed pretty super duper sure of it. I almost fell for it too. But then arrived creepy voice that told me that was impossible because, ah, uh, I don't understand that part. But it seemed quite okay when she said it. Puppy nodded wisely, as if this was everything she needed to know. The Griffin shrugged. So, a computer tells you that you're some sort of crazy machine, but a hallucination says otherwise. I think you got dazed by the EMP grenade because of the backlash on your suit circuitry, and you had a dream. Henry had a yawn before continuing. But I don't think you're a robot puppy. Robots explode when shot. Besides, robots are intelligent. The full frowned. So, what do you think I am? The half-lion stretched her legs and crouched on her improvised couch. You, you're bad news, that's all I need to know. But I like you, so I can hang out with you, 
and be cool like Big Sis Henry. Puppy trotted over to her companion and met Pup uh, Henry's gaze. And the filly's eyes were like two large glowing pink lights in the darkness of the night. Yeah, but I am a pony, right? I mean, it doesn't matter if I don't eat or drink or never need a potty, right? I am a pony. Yeah, she seems worried. This robot thing's actually scaring her. Ah, fuck. Why me? Henry was completely exhausted, and she didn't need a fool with an existential crisis at the moment. All that she wanted was some sleep. The griffin patted the filly on the helmet, yawning. You can be whatever you want to be, puppy. You're a good pony, and good ponies are a most rare variety in equestrian nowadays. As long as you think you should be a pony, then you'll be a pony. Now, go to sleep, please. The little fool smiled and tried nudging Henry through the helmet. Thank you, Henry. You really are my very best chicken friend. Crouching next to the half-eagle, the little pony sighed and waited. She wasn't sleepy at all. Hey! What do you mean by that? I'm not a robot because I'm not intelligent! Puppy poked Henry in the flank, but the griffin just snickered and turned to the other side. Priceless. The little pony kept whining and poking her friend to try and make her talk, but the griffin began to snore loudly, leaving a frustrated puppy complaining in front of a dying fire. Day 10. Time, approximately 1 a.m. Location, Serpent Desert. Big 52, SC Branch. It was still dark, and Puppy couldn't sleep. The fool wasn't tired at all, but Henry didn't want to be disturbed. So the little filly did the most logical thing she could think of. Sightseeing the desert by night. Just because wise Puppy is wise. So far, this place had deluded a lot of Puppy's expectations. After all those movies with cow ponies and the buffaloes, she was quite sure that a desert should be crowded with... Skulls, arrows, tents, and such that you couldn't find in a place with your own hooves. After the days spent in the real desert, the filly had the slightest suspicion that all the buffaloes might have gone away for some sort of holiday, but she hoped to find at least a lizard in a place called Serpent Desert. All she had seen so far were a couple of carts half buried in the sand, and a large parasprite with long teeth that was building something similar to a nest. But when she approached it, the Paris bite flew away, avoiding her. Warning. Hostile detected. Analyzing. Mutated Paris bright. Parador variety. Threat level. Deadly. Ah. Why is even every fluffy, fluffy animal in this place so shy? I just want to make friends. Said the 200-year-old monster to the mutated murderous offspring of Mother Nature and Father Taint. Hey, puppy. It's been a while. You travel a lot, don't ya? Said a metallic voice, which interrupted the little exploration of misadventure. The filly smiled broadly and turned to her friend. Mr. Questioner! Where have you been? It's Watcher. I watch things. Watcher. Puppy nodded, still smiling. Okie dokie, Mr. Questioner. Can I watch things, too? From the speakers of the sprite bot came a soft and metallic chuckle. Puppy. Puppy never changes. Hey, how are you? I've heard that you had a little adventure in Tunnel Town, and now I find you in South of Sun City. Yeah, I met a lot of nice and pretty ponies. There was this chicken called Henry, and then Asso and Sweet Flower, Happy, Jamie, and all of our other friends. Wow. You have quite... You're quite lucky to have so many friends, aren't you? And say, have you been to Sun City? The voice was trying hard to maintain a neutral tone, but it seemed quite curious. Puppy frowned. Yeah, it was like a super duper box with streamers and mighty wrap fine wrappings, but the oatmeal inside. Every pony was grumpy. They didn't want to talk with me or play with me, and their mayor was a stupid voice that told me bad things. Bad things? Like what? Would you like to talk about it? Watcher's tone seemed worried now. Puppy looked away. 
He told me that I wasn't a pony, but a robot. Then, when I used the big teapot that puts po robots to sleep, I was hit too. Every pony keeps telling me that I'm no robot, but I... <laughs> Puppy, don't fret your little head. If there's a thing that I'm completely sure of, is that you're not a robot. You're... The voice probably read some data from a sensor scanning you, but it was a machine and couldn't see beyond your appearance. You are a pretty pony, okay? Now, smile to me and show me that everything's all right. Puppy nodded and smiled a little. Well, now. Zombie ponies in a nice city. Did you find anything like a buzz or a humming sound all over the place? Nopey mopey. But Henry told me about the buzz was gone and all the pretty ponies were going to wake up and be not so pretty. Oh. So at least the interference is gone. I can finally take a look inside the place then. Let me guess, you stopped it? Puppy frowned. No, I just went there because I was told the Henry was in danger. But she wasn't. She just acted like a stupid chicken flying around and not paying attention to me. Like every other pony in town. So I went to this voice mayor, and we had this big argument. He wanted to be smarter than me, so I took a blue teapot and... Uh, excuse me, what is a blue teapot? The Philly sighed. Helmet hoofing. Why do I have to explain everything to every pony? It's a teapot, round and shiny, with a blue pointy end. I found it inside a crushed cart in that place in the swamp. All right, so you detonated a EMP shock shell in front of your supercomputer. Yeah, you stopped the interference. And what about that new look? Puppy tilted her head, trying to look at her mane. You mean the blue line? I don't know. It appeared when I woke up the other day after speaking with Cree. Hey, puppy. Who's there? Hold on, I'm coming. Henrietta's voice interrupted the little pony. Sorry, little one. I have to go now. You can tell me the story another time. Without even waiting for an answer, the sprite bop made a loud, static noise and began playing patriotic music. The griffin landed on a dune, checking the surroundings, with a gun in both of her talons. As soon as she decided that there was no immediate danger, the gunslinger girl put away the weapons and scolded puppy. Bad pony. Stop playing around with the sprite bots and come back to camp. Puppy waved a hoo for the floating robot as it left and trotted back with her feathery friend. I wasn't playing! I was telling about my interesting adventures! Yeah, sure. Now, let's get back to sleep. Tomorrow's gonna be a long day. The griffin rubbed Puppy on the helmet and they went back to their camp. Half an hour later, a scared Parador could finally go back to building its nest in peace. Good morning, fillies and gentle colts. This is Lonesome Pony, and you're listening to Radio 52. Find a radio better than this, and I'll personally give you a treat. Who? DJ Pony? Ha! Please. I've heard he is a she. Really? And during clear nights, she transforms herself into a giant three-headed diamond dog. No kidding. Just go to Ten Pony Tower during a clear night, and you'll see. But LP... There hasn't been a clear night or day since the spells fell. Not my problem, my little ponies. You just stay tuned to Radio 52 and stop your blabbering about cross-dressing radio DJs. Now, back to work. It's news time! Yesterday morning, Sun City woke up from a 19-year-long sleep. I don't have any details, but it seems that during the night, some pony assaulted the central tower of the town stopping whatever device was controlling the minds of her pony in the city. Yeah, my little ponies, you heard me correctly. No pony ever came back from Sun City because the whole place was under the effect of a giant mind control device. That is crazy. And guess what the pretty residents of the did this very same moment? They realized the mind control was gone. You guessed it. They started shooting each other for control of the town. If you're going to Cross Serpent Desert, take a long detour, following Green Route East, and, or take the Chasm Trail, but stay away from Sun City till things settle down. I repeat, stay away from Sun City and avoid Red Route if possible. 
Now, for those of you who lack a little gossip, who's the responsible one for changing the administration of the city? Do I really need to say the name? Yes, my little ponies, our little resident hero saved you from a never-ending sleep so that you could freely and willingly waste your life killing each other! Don't you feel ashamed? I... I don't want to talk about it. Take some music while I look for answers in an empty bottle. What we've got here is a failure to communicate. Some ponies you just can't reach. The voice of the DJ was replaced by music. Day 10. Time. Approximately 10.30 a.m. Location. Rust Manor. Big 52 SC Branch. Rust Manor seemed exactly what it said on the tin. Some pony built a large reinforced barricade made up of huge air wagon carcasses. Reformed a ring a hundred meters in diameter around was originally the offspring of a bunker and an air traffic control tower. The whole structure was once coated in thick, reinforced steel plates. Now all the metal was rusted, and the large tower seemed like a monument to the concept of neglect itself. Nevertheless, the little town was a lively trading spot, with several caravans stationed outside the northern gates, and half a dozen town guards scanning the surroundings of the town from a guard tower built at the top of the wall. Henrietta called for Puppy to try and get her to stop when they were a couple kilometers from the town. There were low hills, becoming a flat plain peppered with craters. During the war, the airfield was heavily attacked with conventional weapons, flattening every structure except the fortified control tower. The open terrain gave a sniper a long line of sight, which made it easy to take care of any possible nuisances. Wait for me, Red Bolt! The griffin landed in front of the filly, taking her break in a cloud of dust. Wow, look where you're landing! I was running there before you. Yeah, sure, whatever. I need you to listen carefully, fish bowl head. I have to leave you again. But this place is safe, so don't find any troubles. Puppy's eyes grew large and teary, while the filly was already starting to pout. But, but why? I don't want you to go away. Yeah, I know. I'm cool, and without me, you're clueless. But those guys that were after me in Sun City had a whole day behind their wings. So it's possible they're waiting here for me. I don't want you to get involved in my troubles. Ah, uh, if the bad chickens are after you, we can explain to them that you're a good girl, and you will behave and say that you're sorry for whatever you did so they'll let you be, can't we? Henrietta sighed and patted Puppy on the helmet. The story's a little more complicated than that, involving things like me having shot a couple of theirs and them wanting my head, so... No. I don't think we can just say that we're sorry. Especially since I'm not sorry. They killed my father. How? Oh. Puppy lowered her eyes, trying hard to think of something else. But you can't just bully those that bully you. I mean, they are not bully bots. They're pretty kitties. You can't bully kitties. Henrietta snickered. Yeah, pretty kitties. This is why I'm not going into town. If I avoid them, there'll be no need for me to kick their sorry butts, and they won't be able to bully me. The griffin shrugged. And this ends the topic. Take care, puppy. I'm sure we'll meet again. Without even waiting for a reply, Henrietta jumped into the air, and with a couple of strokes of her wing, she was already out of range of the eventual stone throw from puppy. The filly galloped off after her friend for a few hundred meters, calling desperately for her before stopping and sighing. Ah, this isn't fair. She didn't even hug me goodbye. The foal raised her head to the sky, screaming, Silky Tail, take care of her. She's in your hooves now. Day 10. Time, approximately 11 a.m. Location, Rust Manor, Big 52 SC Branch. The sniper had been keeping the yellow dot in her sight since she surpassed the last hill. The unicorn mare wasn't certain of what she was looking at. The guard put a hoof on the inner lope. Last stand here. I have a contact at 1186 South. 
It seems a pony in a yellow suit. Could be that ghost from the radio. Fits the description pretty well. Are ghosts welcome here? The speaker replied in a storm of statics and electrical whistles. Keep an eye on the target and see what it does. Call again if you notice any hostile behavior. Otherwise, let it approach the gates. Roger, roger. The mare went back to her position. In the meantime, Puppy reached the first caravans, drawn the attention of almost every hired gun in the area outside the walls. A lot of ponies were whispering to each other, and a couple of them reached for their weapons. The little filly didn't even notice their reactions. Her mother was somewhere inside the town, and this was all she needed to know. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom? Mr. Voice told me she's here. All the ponies in the area looked at the filly. Then one of them sighed. That's ah, just Lonesome's ghost. The guards put away their weapons, and a couple of merchants that stopped chatting at Puppy's appearance went back to their business. But no one replied to her question. Ah, uh, I guess that's a no. The filly was confused. Her status changed from center of attention to completely ignored. This couldn't be right. Ah, when you want something done, you have to do it yourself. Okie dokie, Mr. Voice. Where now? Analyzing. Loading local maps. Blue Feathers Airfield. Matching failed. Loading backup data. Finding points of interest. Points located. 1. Control Tower. Control Tower is set at next waypoint. The arrow moved on the compass. Oh, inside the town? All right. Puppy trotted merrily towards the gates, but was stopped almost immediately by an old stallion wearing a mercenary armor and a dusty hat. Somehow the eyes of this pony held something familiar, as if the little pony had seen them before. Hey, Mom. Why that pony only have three legs? He's a war hero, puppy. Don't bother him, he's very tired. Yeah. Tired of giving my legs to a fucking useless war against fighting fucking enemies I don't even care about because a fucking goddess that puts a bunch of coal in front of a pony's life. <laughs> The pretty pony said strange words. No, puppy. Forget that word. It's a bad word. And you? You should be ashamed of using such language in front of a fool. Fuck off, bitch. Let's go away, puppy. Come with me. But, Mom, I wanted to. Yeah, pink rat, trot after your mom. There's nothing to see here. Puppy blinked, lost in her memories. When she came back from her personal world, the old pony with the angry eyes was still standing there. Till the filly stared back at him until he she tilted her head. Hi, have you seen my mom? The mercenary spat on the ground. Are you deaf or what? The fool sat down, looking confused at her interlocker. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't hear the question. Why are you angry? Did I do something to you? The pony snickered. I asked you if you think you're a hero or what. Puppy smiled. This was easy. Oh, I'm Space Captain Andromeda. With my spacesuit, I'm super fast ride. I travel all around the cosmos and meet a lot of new friends. Want to play with me? I have a rocket, too. Look. The filly rose a hoof, stating, Rocket! A rocket toy floated in front of the filly. The old stallion raised an eyebrow. Are you trying to make a fool of me? Do you know who I am? You better pick your foes and lower your ears. You fucking load of shit. Puppy giggled. Weird words always made her giggle. <laughs> Mr. Pretty Pony says little strange words. Can I play too? I'm good at inventing words like, uh, Scootalicious or Banana Phone. The small crowd of curious ponies started laughing. The little filly not only didn't seem any impressed by the old mercenary, she was laughing at him too. Sooner or later, Somebody's blood was going to stain the dirt. Last stand put a hoof to the intercom and uh, her guard post. Last stand here. There could be trouble inside the northern gate. The yellow ponies get into a fight with a mercenary. We're sending a couple of guards. Wait for instructions and hold fire unless one of ours is attacked. Roger, roger. In the meantime, the old pony grabbed Puppy by the leg and lifted her from the ground looking into her eyes with a menacing face. So you think you can laugh at me? You think I won't touch you just because you're a fucking pony and the radio talks about you, huh? Think again. 
Let me go. I have to find my mom. I didn't do anything to you, meanie face. Put me down. The fool was struggling, but she couldn't break free. If my mom was here, she'd show you. Let me go. Let me go. Somehow, the whining of a little pony killed the mood. The small crowd looked away in embarrassment, and even the old mercenary wasn't really sure what he was supposed to do now. This filly wasn't some stuck-up hero walking triumphantly through the city gates, or some sort of knight in shining armor thinking that he had Luna knows what kind of holy mission. This was just a... Pff, fuck. The lonesome pony must have gone very far with his tequila to call this critter a hero. In the meantime, since everything else didn't work, Hubby started crying, wailing, and whining. Even the last ponies that had hoped to see some action went away in front of that murderous act against dignity. The mercenary put the foal down, sighing, Go away. I don't pick fights with foals. He gave a quick spank to puppies behind to emphasize the order, and the filly galloped away, still crying. Somehow, he knew that he was a bad pony. I should feel bad. And somewhere inside, the weathered mercenary, a little pony, actually did feel bad. But it was just for a fraction of a second. Footnote. Level up. 9. New perk added. Whining presence. You can whine your way out of most every situation. During certain encounters, you gain special dialogue options that you avoid combat. But you'll lose reputation.